Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Blaspheming Bite. Uh, today we're going to do things a little different. Uh, we are not going to be going over a question. Uh, rather, I'll be going over my experience with the uh, with a Facebook interview that I gave recently. Uh, it was for the enterprise engineering team, and sadly it was a reject. But uh, the whole experience was pretty good. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I got an idea about how Facebook interviews. And I just want to share with you kind of um, the role and what what the expectation is kind of from the role. Uh, I'll give you my uh, an idea of how I prepared for the interview and maybe some of the mistakes that I had made uh, along the way. So starting off, the uh, the interview was for something called the Enterprise Engineering Team. And this team basically takes care of all the internal tools that the Facebook engineers use. Uh, so if someone wants to get a VM up and running, um, you would uh, get in touch with the enterprise team. So most of it has to do with uh, bringing up uh, systems, making sure the system is running fine, um, and uh, making sure that you're uh, administering the network well, uh, stuff like that. So in this page, if you go here, you can kind of get an idea, right? what enterprise engineering and I would highly recommend uh, just take a look at hey, what's this role like uh, what is in uh, what the, does the enterprise engineering group actually do at Facebook it's pretty inter interesting uh, the kind of things so they basically make sure that everything that a Facebook engineer needs to develop Facebook uh, the tools are all, always available and they're always uh, ready to go that's kind of the idea about uh, the enterprise engineering think of it like um, an IT team but uh, because uh, uh, because of the scale at which Facebook works and uh, there was a need for having a separate organization that took care of all of these uh, IT needs um, so sadly the uh, the interview was a reject uh, but let's uh, spend some time to go with the experience and some of the references that I used to uh, prepare which uh, which would definitely definitely be helpful for someone who's preparing later for us uh, for a similar interview uh, unfortunately I cannot give you the questions directly but I can give you a general idea about uh, all of the topics now first off the bat is kind of like a rapid-fire round and this is basically where you don't even get to uh, prepare for it like the interview will call you up someday and he will go some simple Linux questions it's really just some very basic Linux and networking questions, and if you Google that, you should be able to find out uh, find out expected questions. Uh, just search for <laughs> Linux systems engineering questions, and you should be able to clear that round. So uh, I, for me, it was unexpected, but because I had some experience uh, porting Wi-Fi drivers to Linux, I had an idea about the ecosystem, uh, uh, some of co common commands that we use and some networking um, networking concepts so i was lucky to clear the stage without <laughs> any preparation basically so once that was out of the way um, it the initial sc uh, uh, screen there was the telephonic coding round now so for this i requested like a month's time to prepare for the interview uh, to prepare for this i simply did lead code there's nothing else that i did um, other than the fact that um, I was making videos um, which I have not published to the page but I was making videos for myself so that I could look at it and refer later. So the, the main idea uh, behind why I was making those videos was that if I am able to teach a concept well to myself then I know for sure that I have completely understood that uh, concept. Uh, in terms of what I did for lead code I made sure that I focused just on the Facebook uh, tag questions. So if you go to Facebook and go onto the Explore tab, you can find a topic for Facebook interviews. So I did all of the questions that come under the Facebook Explore tab, uh, but I didn't do the hard questions. And then uh, the second thing that I did was I went through all, uh, a lot of the Facebook tag questions. I did over 100 Facebook tagged easy and medium questions. I didn't focus too much on the hard questions. Maybe if they were really popular, I looked at them. 
uh, for example, there was there's a question where you're given a numeral and you have to convert in convert it into um, into string, right? So if you're given one zero 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 zero, you have to say that's one million, right? So questions like that, which are very common, you might want, even though it's hard, you might want to take a look at it. Um, since the role that uh, I understand is more oriented towards scripting, you have to be sure that you are good with file handling in your language of choice. Uh, beyond that, you have to be very thorough with common data structures such as map, heap, etc. So I personally was a little bit rusty on file handling and I wasn't too prepared on file handling. Uh, but I was able to come up with uh, a presentable solution for the question asked and th thankfully that got me through. Um, I was actually pretty sure that I wouldn't even make it on site but I was uh, I made the cut because the the concept was there I just missed the the part where uh, I have to open the file and read it. So having this YouTube channel definitely helped because I was able to better verbalize my solution and clearly kind of articulate what my thought process was. Uh, at the end of the day, I feel that most companies are looking for engineers who can really talk about their solution and explain what the solution is to a fellow engineer. Uh, so once all this was done and the phone uh, coding round was done, uh, it was time for the virtual on-site. So for this as well, I requested a, about a month's time uh, because of the fact that uh, the rounds were more around Linux and networking and as much as I worked with Linux I didn't have a lot of in-depth uh, experience working with Linux there were basically five rounds one is the coding uh, another is the behavioral uh, interview the Linux systems interview net networking interview and the system design interview so for the on-site I focused most of my energy on the Linux systems I spent hours and hours learning and relearning the concept concepts so there are two books that I uh, referred and I found them very useful and I highly recommend these two books. So the first book that I used, uh oh, not that one, is this one. It's called The Linux Kernel Development by Robert Lowe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Um, I found this very, uh, found this a very good book because it gave a little bit of a historical uh, aspect to uh, the, the Linux like starting from the very early like pre 2 dot kernel information so they were building up a solution so for example if you were talking about how reads and writes happen with the disk uh, they they went from the earliest like the Linux uh, elevator implementation and then talked about the cons of that implementation and then wh what was the enhancement done so in that way this was a really a really thorough book uh, the only downside that I felt was that they would really uh, they would get into the data structure and the actual implementation uh, really really quick and so, some of that information you don't really need but uh, in between some of that information there might be some tidbits that are really important for an interview setting so that's the only thing I have against this book but otherwise it is a really well thought out book I probably read it like three times. Uh, it, it was really, it was a really good book. Um, however, towards the end of my preparation, I found out another book called the Linux uh, Programming Interface. And this book has more uh, theoretical and more elaborate information uh, regarding concepts, not just going into how it is actually implemented, but a more high level uh, understanding of how the Linux kernel works. And this is this is definitely a book that will that in my future interviews I will be referring more uh, later. So that is the Linux programming interface by Michael Karisk. I definitely wish I had spent more time on the second book because the information was just uh, presented in a better manner. Um, so uh, the the third the uh, the third important part or the third uh, information that I want to give here is about a uh, troubleshooting. Okay. Uh, for troubleshooting, you can't really prepare for that, right? Because you're not going to see issues at scale or issues in a server when you're working with your own Ubuntu PC or something. You need actual hard uh, work experience to be able to do that. But you can prepare for that, right? Uh, how do you prepare for that? The best thing to do is to have an arsenal of 
all of these troubleshooting applications with you and depending on the uh, situation uh, situation you can utilize them so for example if your processor if your computer is running really slow you can check if any process is using a lot of the uh, cpu so you can use a top command uh, to see what process is using a lot of the cpu or maybe you're running out of ram and there's a lot of uh, paging going on so there you would check hey is uh, is any application using a lot of uh, ram and there might be maybe the swap space is uh, getting completely used or something like that uh, yeah coming back to uh, how do you prepare for the uh, troubleshooting now if you've got a lot of time on your hands um, and i hope you have a lot of time on your hands um, i would definitely recommend this book called the systems uh, performance by brendan gregg um, he is oops on that one yeah it's called the system performance enterprise in the cloud by uh, brendan gregg highly highly recommend this book um, if you don't have a lot of time to go through the book he has this uh, methodology that he uh, that he is called the use method so whenever you're looking for a problem like let's say uh, a developer comes to you and says hey there's a problem in my in the system that's running really slow use something called the use methodology and what use is basically you check for the utilization you check if uh, the saturation and you check if there are errors so what basically uh, is it's telling you is check the usage is there a lot of cpu ram or hard disk usage check for saturation is the cpu uh, ram or disk being utilized to its maximum and check for errors like um, sometimes there could be a possibility where uh, you're trying to read uh, from the drive but it's not really reading anything uh, you're reading some place that you're not supposed to be reading and your application is uh, stuck in a continuous loop so there you can throw out some errors maybe check the d message or something like that uh, the he has a uh, brendan has got a really nice page where he's using the use method um, for all of the uh, different areas where there could be a problem i will put i have put that in the link uh, definitely go check it up if you want to get a high level idea or if you don't have enough time just go through all of those commands and you should be good for uh, a system uh, for troubleshooting problems uh, also I'll, i have put some links to cora uh, they're from uh, a person who is working as a production engineer at uh, facebook in london and he's got a lot of uh, useful resources that you should definitely check out uh to be honest i actually fell in love with linux after learning how the kernel works and the way the files form the basis of literally everything in linux and how the file system is completely abstracted out to how user space and kernel space boundaries have to be strictly followed i was really just amazed about all of the brilliant ideas that went into creating linux i personally was just really looking forward to delving into linux a lot more after getting hired but uh, sadly that was not to be but i hope that someday you get a chance to interview for a similar position and in the process of preparing for this uh, position you even you fall in love with the uh, linux kernel uh, moving on the networking uh, side of it i honestly did not spend a lot of time on it uh, because linux itself was a, a big beast to tackle i did not spend um, as much time as i should have um doing uh, looking at the networking questions um so common question that they ask during these uh, enterprise production engineering uh, roles is uh, they'll ask you like what's a what's a what's a what's your favorite protocol and then the minute you talk about say that hey okay this is my favorite protocol then they go into depths like they go into the deepest bowels of that protocol and trying to find out hey what's the depth of this uh, person like how how much does he know what's uh, if I keep probing, what's where does he hit a brick wall? And for me, I used uh, TCP because I, I had some experience working on the NetX Duo stack in um, uh, on embedded systems. Basically, uh, I had some work around the state machine of uh, TCP. So we, we went into uh, a little bit of depth there, but I wasn't too satisfied with that part of the interview. Um, but it wasn't a pure networking role um, so I, it would have been okay if I had done really good on my Linux uh, interview which I personally felt I did but 
uh, probably it wasn't enough I, I have probably have to prepare differently for for this particular role um, so I my work was is mostly in the 802.11 uh, physical layer which is uh, Wi-Fi but that's really not something that um, they were really looking for uh, the last round was the system design round um, I, I, unfortunately I cannot share the question but definitely going through uh, grokking the system design interview just google that you'll find uh, uh, a website which has this course uh, it was definitely helpful uh, to basically get me to a working solution it wasn't the best solution definitely not because I'm not I don't do a lot of system design uh, but it is definitely helpful to use uh, the grokking uh, grokking the system design interview course I would highly recommend that you do that if you have any system design uh, courses they have got about uh, 15 to 16 uh, different courses uh, different chapters uh, where you <laughs> start off by trying to create bitly and uh, then you go all the way up to designing YouTube uh, Netflix uh, so, uh, LinkedIn Instagram everything so it's it's really useful I would definitely highly recommend that uh, for the behavior around it was mostly uh, around questions like uh, how do you deal with people uh, talk about like projects that you worked on before now this is a this is something that you really can't prepare for it it has to come from you like but there are a lot of questions that are very common um, something that you have to follow is uh, the star methodology so you get the star methodology is basically situation so what situation did you tackle at uh, work um, uh, assign that to a, a task and what is the action that you took and what is the uh, result right so le let's say for example uh, there was a, a big issue at the company and that was the situation and uh, there was a lot of um, uh, top management looking into this issue and you decided to take up that task of fixing that issue and the action that you did was that you fixed the issue and what is the result the result was that the customer or whoever you developed that for was really happy and uh, found it very useful finally you got uh, the approval uh, good um, good feedback from your uh, management upper management as well so that's the star methodology make sure that you use it all the time when you're going through behavioral interviews um, overall so this is the, my interview uh, overall the result was that I did pretty good on the coding rounds which my whole channel is all about but the Linux and networking weren't great and therefore they weren't able to go ahead now the uh, the sad part is that I'll have to wait another 10 to 12 months to be able to interview with uh, Facebook again so yeah there you go that was my experience uh, interviewing with Facebook as an enterprise engineer uh, the interviews are pretty much similar for production uh, engineering roles there are a ton of uh, references that you can use to prepare for a similar role uh, I, I've put some links in the uh, in the description and I hope you do a lot more lot better than uh, I did during uh, for the interviews and I hope you found this uh, video helpful thank you for watching and have an amazing day